Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all doing? May the 7th, 2023. Let's begin the Sunday worship. Let's close our eyes and prayerfully begin our worship time. I will raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Amen. Hallelujah, our Heavenly Father. On, on your day, we thank you that we can come to a true God with our brothers and sisters and worship you. You sent Jesus Christ to save us and give us eternal life and hope for heaven. There are many things happens in this world beyond our imagination, but we have the help come from the Creator of heaven and earth. No matter what happens, we have unchanging protection and love and grace from you. So through this time of worship, in the presence of the Spirit, may we receive the new grace and may you receive the wonderful glory. We come before you with the praise. Please receive our praise. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise.
Fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Oh, my God. 
Every month on the first day, first Sunday, we would like to remember the Lord's Prayer. So you can see the Lord's Prayer on the screen. So let us uh, recite this together to make us a confession, our confession. Let's pray. Our beloved, our Lord, our God, we praise your name and we bow before your presence and open our heart and come to you. Please receive each one of our heart. Please forgive all our sins in the past days. We were ignorant to your will and we have done us. We thought of so many wrong things, wrong things uh, before you. So, without knowingly or, knowingly or unknowingly, we want to confess and repent all our sins that we have done, we have committed. Please forgive according to your will. We are your children and we want to help us to be um, in the right path that we can live according to your will. As we, uh, as we study your word, I pray that we can preach uh, your gospel to others. So prepare our heart to fill us with, uh, fill our heart with uh, praise and worship. Please uh, strengthen Pastor Lee, who's uh, teaching us. And pray that you will uphold them as they trust in you. Pray for those who are struggling with their uh, illness. Please uh, give them healing. And pray for those who are anxious about uh, many problems. I pray that they can overcome um, their concerns and anxiety. Please uh, help us to grow in, the, in spirit. Pray for the world. I pray that you will send your help to the, those who are struggling. And pray that peace will be on, on this world. Amen. Pray for the, the peace, the peaceful days and, uh, to many people. And we thank you that we can be here to worship together. Pray for those who are um, serving the praise, praise team, ukuleles, and, and pray for those who are. Uh, pray. Thank you for Grace, who's uh, serving for children. We pray for those who are preparing the meal. We pray for brothers and sisters who are far away from us, but we share the same faith. Pray for their health. Pray that, that they can um, serve to preach the gospel. Pray for the blessing for those uh, serving in the cause of gospel. We give you thanks and pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. <coughs> I just realized I didn't plug in it. <laughs> now it's
plugged in. I'm so sorry. Yes, I just plugged it. Let's uh, greet each other and welcome each other. <laughs> now you can hear me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It wasn't plugged in. Okay. We have some uh, new visitor today. Working now, Bill. Yep, thank you. <coughs> How old are you now? You'll be ten now. This is a uh, tenth anniversary uh, this year, so. our church now. <coughs> Wait, maybe some of you are wondering I was standing in front uh, uh, during the praise time and uh, there's some internet problems going on but, and uh, when you pray uh, some of you may be wondering if I'm why I'm checking the uh, cell phone during the worship time because I'm just checking the, the condition of the internet connection. So, <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, um, <coughs> you can see some of the prayer requests. Uh, we do have a prayer time during the week as well. We keep praying for the. Uh, um, all these are prayer requests, pray for our worship time and the Bible study time and anyone can join us uh, through the internet too and some of some people cannot be here um, with us but uh, pray for those who are worshipping together online pray that our church will produce more life Pray for the ministry of the, the gospel. And pray for those who was not well, uh, early. And, and pray for the power of the healing. Pray for the complete healing for Mike. 
and Caden and uh, <coughs> others uh, who are feeling uh, weak, weakness, uh, physically weak, uh, mentally, pray for God's uh, strength and uh, healing on them. And pray for those who don't believe in Jesus prayerfully. Uh, that, uh, pray that we will be the ones to share the gospel with them. Pray for the missionaries uh, serving all over the world. Yes, uh, last week, Johan and Haruko, um, we heard about their story and we had a wonderful time. <coughs> And uh, we received a thankful letter, a letter, of, letter of thanksgiving from them. So you can read that uh, during the fellowship time. And we have a Wednesday Bible study on Zoom in the morning and in the evening. And also we have uh, the study in person. And we also started uh, English Bible study on thir we are going to start on Thursday 8 to 9 through Zoom. So if you are interested in, please join uh, or just send us email and or call us so we will send you the link. Mm. <coughs> we have an intercessory prayer meeting on when Friday. We will have time of offering. And, uh, please uh, use the offering box in the back before or after the worship time. The offering is the acceptable sacrifice that please God pleases. <coughs> So let us pray together. And uh, before we pray, and uh, if you have uh, any pain, um, weakness, just place your hands and let's pray um, for the healing as well. Our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ came to save us, um, rescue us from various problems. He has the power to resurrect the dead because He is a creator and He is a powerful God. <coughs> and He has the power to heal so many people. So we believe that Jesus has, that Jesus is able to do it. So as we pray, place, place our hand on our weak weakness and pray that you will give us healing. Please shine the light of healing and, and remove the, the cause of all our problems and give us the, make us new so that we will know that you truly are alive and you are the savior and you saved us from all our sins and gave us eternal life so with the heart of thanksgiving for this salvation and all the provisions you give us we, with a heart of thanksgiving, we want to offer this offering to you. We give our heart to you, we give our time to you. Pray that for, uh, you will bless everyone who give this offering to you. And I pray that you will, uh, your kingdom will extend uh, through this offering, that a new life will be born. Please sanctify this offering. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's uh, read today's scripture, Luke 15, 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near Jesus to listen to him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. 
And so he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave does not leave the other ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he found he has found it, he puts it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep that was lost. I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together his, her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is a joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. <coughs> Let's pray one more time. Beloved Heavenly Father, we are about to hear your word. Pray that through the Spirit that you will speak to each one of us directly. So as we as I preach and, and translate and listen, and that we, will be, we will be filled with the Spirit so we will know the wonderful grace and we will understand how wonderful you are. Help give us the grace that we need. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> in last week, on Thursday and Wednesday and Thursday, I went to the Korean church, a Korean church in Houston and administered them. Bef before the pandemic, uh, they've been asking me to come to preach to them even from before pandemic, so I haven't been able to go there for a long time, but finally we, I could go. So when, when I met the pastor there, he asked me how this church had started and how people were becoming Christian. He was, uh, when he heard my story and he asked me to go there. And in Korean churches has a lot of people comparing with the Japanese church and uh, but they there aren't that many people who become Christian most of them moved from move from other churches so there aren't many new believers but the Japanese people um, usually have difficult time becoming Christian, but when he heard that many Japanese are uh, uh, becoming believers through this Austin Japanese church, so he rejoiced with us. And uh, we, many people were uh, pleased to hear our story and rejoicing together so we could give glory uh, with them. And so, when non-believer become Christian, it is such a wonderful uh, thing that, as we read, we, there is a great joy in heaven as well. In Luke 15, <coughs> there is a famous story that even non-Christians have heard. There are three famous parables. parables. That's the story of lost sheep and a lost coin, and also the lost son, the prodigal son. This, when prodigal son, when he lost um, all the all the the money he had and. He was in a miserable condition, and, just, and finally he repented and came back to the Father. 
Jesus was, uh, I would like to talk to you, talk about more of who Jesus was talking to, but especially in verse 1 and 2, you can see that and Jesus was speaking to those who were sinners, the, the people regarded as sinners, and also there were Pharisees and the scribes. And not only that, Jesus was not only talking to them, he was eating with them. <coughs> So the Pharisees and the scribes, they were complaining how Jesus accepted the sinners and eating with them. So if you were eating together, you were uh, placing yourself on the same place with them. So the Pharisees and scribes, the religious people, did not eat with the sinners. So, if Jesus was eating with them, then Jesus must be uh, sinners as well. That's how they were complaining. And Jesus told them these uh, three parables. So, Jesus, Jesus told them this parable. So, this is a parable. But you can say in this, um, in English, you can tell easily it is one parable, not three parables. So you can see three stories in Luke 15, but Jesus saw them as one story, one same parable. So these three stories have not three, but one unified theme, and he has one teaching. There's one thing he wanted to teach. That the, the main point is how much of joy there is when the lost sinner is found. And this is what what's in God's heart. When somebody repent, somebody repents and be, be saved, that brings joy to God, and that is God's will. So the she, whether it's sheep or a coin or the lost son, those are repre those are the representative of people who are lost. That God is desiring to save them. So there is one unified theme among these uh, three stories and parables. The first one was about the sheep. A man had how many sheep? He had hundred sheep. But one of them is lost, was lost. And he is asking, doesn't he leave the 99 and, and, and keep finding until he finds this lost sheep? Some people might think, what will happen to 99? You may wonder. But what, what uh, Jesus is emphasizing is um, the one lost sheep. <coughs> but usually the shepherd has, uh, is not alone. You may have hundred sheep. There are other shepherds as well. So you can leave the 99 to others and he can search for the one lost one. So when Jesus told the parables, uh, he, he told the parables in a way that people understand, people of that age understand. And in Israel, there were many shepherds and they know what it is like to be a shepherd. And uh, 
what, what are they eating? Uh, what are they doing? The um, sheep always looking for uh, food. She, they just uh, look down and keep search for food. And, and every time we talk about uh, uh, some people always thinking about eating and just like that. Sheep always think about eating, and they they have bad sight, so they cannot see far away. So they just uh, keep focusing on the the food right in front of them. And the sheep also fall a lot. And once they fall, what will happen? <laughs> and they fall over and they cannot uh, get up by themselves. <laughs> and so they just keep struggling uh, like that. <coughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, so they need the help of the shepherd to get up, and they often fall like this. And the sheep need the shepherds, and also they cannot see far away, so they just follow the sheep in front of them, but the sheep in front of them also have bad eyesight, so they don't know what's coming from ahead, and, and often if the one in the front line, they fall on the cliff, the others will follow, and sometimes the hundreds of sheep can die falling in the cliff. So sheep is um, uh, sheep is really a stupid animal. Then. And so some people use the sheep as an insult to others that show them how much of foolish uh, people they are. But there's one good thing about sheep that they can hear well. Uh, there's something good about sheep and uh, they they have good ear so when the shepherd call them they can hear the voice and the shepherd love each one of them the shepherds over there call them by name they know the names of each sheep and when the sheep hear the name, they come to the shepherd. And they are safe if they are near the shepherd, and the shepherds always protect them. But because they cannot see well, and they just focusing on the food, they often get lost. So they walk away from the, the shepherd. And you can see that in Isaiah 53, all of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. They are only focusing on the food, uh, things of this world, and they, don't, they lost their spiritual sight, and they are just people are seeing only the physical things, the worldly things, and they lose their way and go on astray. So when, peop, when the sheep uh, leave the path, uh, shepherd, the shepherd will keep walking around until he finds the lost sheep. Because the shepherd named the sheep and loved the sheep like a child. And this is the heart of the shepherd. And when he finds the lost sheep, what does he do? He rejoices, he's rejoiced and rejoicing and putting the sheep on the shoulder and go back. And when he returns home, not only rejoicing, but also uh, inviting all the neighbors and friends and have a party together, they, um, they rejoice together because I have found my sheep. 
that was lost. And when you um, um, if he has a big party like that, he might have to spend so much more money than lost sheep. But because he loved the sheep, because he was overjoyed, so he didn't mind spending a lot of money to share this joy together. And that is the heart of God. And just like that, Jesus said, if there is one sinner who repents and comes back to God, there is a great joy in heaven. So the three parables in, uh, in today's scripture, we will talk about the long, uh, prodigal son later. Uh, I don't have enough time to go to the third parables today. If I, if I tell you now, we may not have time to eat. So let's uh, talk about it later. But also, the second one is the story of the co lost coin. Uh, one woman had ten coins, ten silver coins. And uh, it is unusual that Jesus uh, mentioned the women because the women are neglected in those days. But um, so it is a, it is a um, unusual thing for Jesus to use a woman to represent God, but Jesus did not neglect anyone, so he used this woman, and she, when she lost one coin, she would uh, light a lamp and sweep the house and keep searching carefully until she finds it. Um, it, this story reminds me when I was in the story uh, when I was in Mongolia that as a missionary and I met another missionary there and he told me to go to seminary to be trained so I came to America because of his advice now this missionary was originally lived in California and he was the uh, he had a jewelry business and he was a very wealthy man he goes travels around and find this uh, uh, gem and he just polishes them and make jewelry um, and he can sell them with a high price. So, so he used to have a business like that to, um, and one day he lost, um, he lost the business. Oh, he lost one of the jewelry, and so he, he just kept looking around the house, even the trash can, and he just kept looking and looking, and, and what happened? And he finally found this lost uh, jewelry, and, and he said he, he said that the, the joy he had of finding was so, so great that, um, now, if you lose a jewelry and find it, I'm sure that will give you joy. But think about this, how much of the value this one silver coin had. This one drachma coin is uh, it's about the value of one day's wages. Um, it, it might be depend on the job or people, but it could be a more than two hundred dollars. So if one coin has a value of more than two hundred dollars, of course it's valuable. But you, you may give up if you can't find. But this woman, she just there was a reason that she kept looking for it. Now, some people make a uh, bracelet with uh, silver coins, but in those days, and people make the 
a special jewelry or necklace or decorations. Uh, this could be a special gift for the wedding. So what, what's the significance of this? So these, uh, there is a, there's more than just uh, the value, the monetary value, because it has uh, more significance. Uh, so it, there could be some memory of the family, or it's not just a matter of the value, but it's the, um, if you lose one of the set, it, it's as, um, it is a loss as if you lost all of them. So only one of them are lacking. Uh, just became, uh, the whole set will be not valuable. So that's why this woman was so happy to find this uh, lost coin. And so she spent so much money uh, rejoicing together with uh, her friends and neighbors. And that is the heart of God. So just like that, Jesus said, if one sinner repent, the there's a joy before God with the angels in heaven. So today we looked at only two of the parables, but as I said, there is one common theme that there is a great joy when he found one lost sinner. So these um, the common theme among these three parables is the lost one and also the joy of finding it. And that is the purpose of Jesus' coming to this world. That Jesus came to uh, seek and find the lost. This is uh, the very core of the gospel message. In Luke 19, 10, it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that was lost. And he, when he finds it, there is a joy in heaven. What, are, what was the difference of, um, among these parables? The first one was one of 100, and the second one was the one of 10, and the last one was one of two, was lost. So the percentage was different, but does it make the difference? And as I said, uh, when, it when, when I talked about the coin, so one coin has the same value as a 10 coin. And, but the sheep as well, uh, if it's 99, it's not uh, complete. So he has to have all 100. And um, if you think um, of a family, if one of them is lacking, um, it's not complete. Every time one is missing, they feel it's not complete. So in order to have this joy, we need to have this one that is lost. So even in church, uh, each one of us are uh, not separate in order to be complete the, we all are valuable each one of us are valuable as a whole what are the other differences among these uh, um, among these stories now the sheep and the sun are some living creatures and they, uh, they walked away from God with their own will. So the sheep and the lost son 
also came back to their father or the shepherd. So they left with their choice and they can come back to the, the shepherd or father. On but how about the coin? One coin. The coin did not roll away from the owner by by itself, by, by their own will, and they cannot come back, return to their owner by themselves. So they just roll down and uh, just hide in the in the dark, dirty place. And if they don't find, if they are not found, they are worthless coin. Just like that, we humans, uh, we cannot be, save ourselves with our own strength. And that's what the parable of coin is teaching us. And also the other parables uh, teach us that um, maybe the other parables are teaching us that, that we can uh, exercise our will to come to um, hear the, the message of the gospel. In the country like here, United States, you can go to the church you want to, you have a choice. And you have a chance to hear the gospel from others. So people in our country, they can, um, they can choose to come back to God. But there are people who cannot hear, um, they have no choice. Uh, they have no opportunity to hear about the gospel. Last week we heard about the story in Japan and there are some towns and cities that some people never see a church or never encounter Christians. And not only Japan, there are many countries like that in the world. So why did Jesus come? He came to search and find those people who are lost, who cannot find Jesus by themselves. So we have a responsibility to share the gospel with those who are lost. Last week, uh, Johan and Haruko read this verse um, and told us that if, how can, how can, uh, who, how can they call on him whom they have not believed or they have not heard? How can they hear without the people who preach to them? And, Whoever calls on him, the name of the Lord, will be saved. But for those who cannot, who does not have opportunity to hear, we need to be praying for them and serving them. So Jesus came to find the lost sheep. He came to save us. But there are people who do, doesn't have opportunity to hear. So let's keep praying for the, the missionaries. And if we have the lost sheep around us, let us share the gospel with them. And let us have the heart of Jesus, God's will, and share, uh, spread this uh, wonderful love, message of love. God's love with others. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we did not have the way to be saved, but God loved us. And you sent your Son, Jesus Christ. 
And Jesus uh, left all the glory in heaven and came to save us. We're so thankful. So may we have the same heart as Jesus and we will be diligently serving and sharing the Jesus' gospel with them. I give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you can, please stand and join us in worship. of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Spirit will be on each one of us who call on the name of Jesus Christ and those who want to share the salvation and love of Jesus and from now and forever we ask for the blessing Amen